Jennifer. And I'm Emily. And we are the owners of Porcelain. She doesn't do the designing, I do. And today's video is the sew along for view A for my new Brenda brief. So it is a high waisted brief. Um, Emily, can you handle the, she's in charge of the camera switching. Um, so this is the brief that we will be sewing. So it has um, panels on the side, fold over elastic on the legs and the waist, and a panel in the back. So I hope you enjoy this sew along. Make sure to subscribe and comment below with any questions that you might have. Still getting the hang of using a rotary blade and the projector. Definitely it's a lot faster than, you know, doing paper. And as long as you have a sharp rotary cutter, this works. As you can see, I'm trying to conserve as much of the fabric as I can because I'm using some scraps. I made other things with here and I may not have gotten the corners real good, so gonna kind of come in and snip those corners. Yeah, it looks like the spandex in this didn't really want to cut. I might not have gotten good leverage on it. <clears throat> but this could also be due to a very dull blade. I have some more blades. I'll just switch them out. I haven't really used a rotary blade in probably 15 years. So here are all the pieces laid out, ready to cut. The back is sitting up here. And I am actually gonna go ahead and I am going to attach the crotch and the lining to the front and the back. And I'm gonna do that first before we do anything with the elastics. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I believe this is my right sides are together. I can't really tell. So I'm going to line these pieces up. And my pin. 
pins do not like this fabric. I'm going to then take and flip this over so I can sandwich this piece in between. So now I'm going to have my wrong side facing down and then pin all three pieces together. Okay, so you can easily do this in two steps. I like to do this in one step. I like to actually do as much of the pinning as I can before I go over to the sewing machine, and then um, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so now I'm going to set, move this around, so I'm looking at the front of the back side, and I'm then gonna take the right side of the back. You can see I kind of squared off the seam allowances. I thought it would be a little bit easier to line things up. So now we've got right sides together. Okay, with that here, I'm gonna kind of roll this all to the inside. And pull this over so I can then sandwich everything in between. I'm gonna add just a couple more pins since this is a longer, a longer pass it. Okay, so now I am ready to go ahead and sew these pieces together. When I come back, then we will discuss what the next step is. So I'm gonna be sewing this one with my overlock machine. Now you can do this with the straight stitch. You just wanna make sure that you probably reinforce this seam. So you can use a piece of twill tape to stitch along it if you don't have an overlock or a serger. So you can stitch just a straight line at the seam allowance with using a piece of twill tape, and that'll keep it from stretching as you're wearing it. So always be careful that you don't have anything else that's gonna go into the machine before you start. Um, whenever I'm working on my overlock, I always make sure that my blade is up, which it is. So I can slide that in and slide it as far as I can. And with this seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch. So we'll be able to cut off a nice big eighth of an inch with this machine. Now, depending on how big your machine stitch is, um, we wanna make sure that that stitch on this far side um, hits at exactly that 3 eighths of an inch, otherwise it could end up being a little bit too big on you. And I just take my time. Okay. Have that one stitch finished. Now we're gonna do on the front. So same thing, kind of shake everything out of the way. Make sure my, my blade is up. And you can also, if you've got pieces that kind of like to flip around on you, you can use the needle to help kind of guide it through the machine. Just be careful that your um, machine doesn't cut your needle. Especially with the industrial machines, it'll cut it right off. Okay. So now that stitch is done and I'll meet you back at the table. Okay, now we can kind of pull this right side out so we can see that we have a clean finish in the inside and a clean finish on the outside. The next thing we want to do is we actually want to attach our pink pieces. Now if you look, I made it so there's a nice little notch here and a nice new notch there to line them up. 
So this is a little tricky, so you're going to flip them this way. So I always pin one at the front and one at the back. Um, and then just double check that you, that everything is, that you're getting ready to pin the right stuff together. And I am not. Right? Yeah, I was getting ready to pin that side. See, this is... So I have that piece here. We can just kind of double check that the shape's looking good, that is correct. Um, now, if you can see, we have the concave and the convex. It's a lot easier to kind of manipulate the convex one. So we're just going to kind of pull this one up a little bit. And as we are, I'm going to slowly pin from both ends. So pin there. And kind of the pin over here. And because I probably didn't do that a great job, I'm just going to readjust that piece. And then what I want to try and do is find the middle. So kind of press everything out flat and then kind of just find the middle and pin it together. And then the rest, just keep going around. So the convex is going to stretch slightly to fit into the concave if we're going to, because we're lining up the outside edges. But the inside at that 3 eighths of an inch is where it's going to be stitched. So I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. So I like to do extra pins here. Let me get this piece all ready. So this comes here. I'm going to flip it over so I can see where everything lines up. And you can see I definitely need to fix where those two pieces are together. So I'm going to pin, just get another pin in here that's on this end. Pin over here. And then kind of slowly kind of press and stretch that out so we can find that middle. And then I'm going to split that in two, split this one in two, and then we can add extra pins in here just so we get the edges lining up. Now this is ready to be stitched at the sewing machine. Now, if, you are, if you're using a zigzag stitch to sew these pieces together, because you cannot use a straight stitch on this because this goes around the body, and so you would pop all of the threads if you sewed this with a straight stitch. But if you're gonna sew it with a zigzag, what I want you to do is at the very beginning, right here, and at the very end, I want you to use a straight stitch, maybe about a half an inch at both ends. So half an inch here, half an inch here. So that way we get a nice corner and a nice edge so we have a smooth transition from front to back so we can sew the elastic on. So this is all ready for me to go over and stitch together. Okay, so for this one, I am at my overlock machine. Now I know this green fabric is a little bit flimsier, so I'm going to try and sew this with the flimsy side up. Now to get this started at this end is going to be a little tricky, so I'm going to reposition my pin so I kind of get that kind of angled down. Make sure my needle, my uh, blade is up. Nothing else is in the machine that shouldn't be. I'm going to use the pin to kind of hold everything in place as I begin sewing. 
I'm going to take this real slow so I don't mess. Oh, and I just cut the tip of the pin off. Okay. Happens with industrial machines. Okay, slow and steady. Slow and steady. to the table and we'll go from there. Okay, right, so now I'm going to take a look at this. Beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is going to be just a little bit different. So there's four different options for this panty. Um, and I'm actually going to sew the elastic a little bit different in this one than I am going to be for any of the other ones. And this is actually going to be just sewing the elastics on before I assemble everything together. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be assembling the fold over elastic around the leg on both sides. And then what we can do on the top is that once we get this together, we can actually attach this to kind of one side and then do the elastic so we have one opening so we can kind of clean finish it that way. But we're going to do this one step at a time. First thing I want to do is, well, I want to clip up and trim up kind of my edges so things look good. That's why I can cut off any of these, anything that needs to get cleaned up. Like this point looks really nice. It came together really nice and clean on both pieces. I'm excited about that. And I just spit on that. You didn't see that, did you? Okay, I'm gonna just clip these. Clip this. And then this. Okay. I'm gonna get my fold over elastic all ready. So there's a few ways where we can work with the fold over elastic to make your life a little bit easier. The first is to actually fold it in half and iron it. In this way, it'll keep it from flopping up. So as you can see from the edges, you can kind of see, it's actually trying to roll up. So for the best case in this, I'm actually gonna take, and I'm gonna iron this closed. So it makes it a little bit easier to apply it on here so it's not moving around underneath the machine and causing me issues. So I'm going to turn my iron on and I'm going to get this ironed and then I am going to meet you back over at my zigzag machine to get the fold over elastics attached to the legs. Okay, so I ironed most of this in half and so I'm going to work on basically going around this curve. I'm going to do both of my legs with this. And to start it, well, I make sure my, my stitch is on correct. And I may end up running out of thread, so we shall see. Um, and the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna get the, the elastic started in the machine, so that way we know it's gonna start moving through the machine. Okay, so let's pick a side, any side. Let's start with this one. So I'm gonna put my pink, the pink end in here. I'm just kind of fold it over. And it's the starting that's a little bit tricky. And once you kind of get it in there, because I've got this folded, it makes it a little bit easier. So I can also pull this elastic a little bit, especially going around the bum. You might wanna have it a little bit on the snug side.
this so we got this little notch we're just going to kind of force it kind of we're going to go past the notch and if we keep that in there so i'm going to try that again with that little notch We're going to try and stitch the back, the front to the back, on one piece, on one side, so then we can sew our our waistband in one in one go. So down here at the corner, we've got to. We'll, we'll start at the top. So I'll pin it at the top. And then we'll go down to the bottom. Now, we want to actually stitch where the two, oh, where the two elastics intersect. So we're actually gonna do a stitch right here at this machine, which is why I didn't get up. I'm going to stitch this by taking off my zigzag and we're going to try and get this point secured. I'm going to do this with my getting my needle down in, taking out that pin so it doesn't get in the way. And that looks, that worked pretty good. And that was the last of the thread, so I have to rethread it before I sew anything else on this machine. But now we're ready to go and sew this at the overlock and come back over here and finish up the waistband elastic. Now I am ready to actually apply the elastic around the waistline. So I will get back over to the zigzag machine and work on that next. So we finished the both legs and now we just have the waistline to do. So we're going to do this so we can kind of clean finish this last seam. And so I'm going to get my fold over elastic. Now you can take and use the pre-cut amount and then kind of stretch it to fit. Um, I like to kind of do it just by feel. And every single fold of elastic works a little differently, so you definitely want to practice and test it. So I'm actually going to get it started by stitching it in half, so folding it in half, getting it underneath. This can get a little tricky because this part is not ironed. I did iron some of it the other day. Um, I also need to make sure that I've got the right stitch and stitch length. Okay, so I'm just going to get it started. Okay, it is started. Now I can feed my fabric into it. So definitely having it ironed would be a whole lot easier. But I can pretty much manage this. Okay, I'm gonna do a kind of just give it a little bit of a tug. But this elastic does stretch out. This one's, this particular one stretches out a little bit when you sew it. So my stretching out mostly makes it so it looks like it's completely flat when it's stitched.
set this aside because I'm pretty much done with that at this point. Now I want to take and see what else I need to sew together. So we have this seam right here and I'm not too worried about where that notch is. I am worried and concerned about where I'm lining these pieces up. Where I begin to sew them, I want to make sure that I stitch it right where these two overlap. So I'm going to do kind of a, a little tacking job with the straight stitch there and I'm also going to do it up here. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to start up here and I'm going to just do a little tack just just kind of where the fold over elastic is because I want to have a nice smooth transition right there. So I usually get it in place and get my needle, got to change it out of zigzag. I get it down right in the point where I want it. And then do my little stitch. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do that over here and I stuck the pin on the wrong side. So I definitely want to have these budding up to the edge so that I will definitely get my needle into, into the elastic before I even put that foot down. And if this is not perfect, you want to take it out and you want to get it so you, your edges do line up. Otherwise, it will not look really pretty when you're done with it. Okay, so now I'm just going to finish up pinning this seam and then take it over to the overlock machine. So I can go finish up this and then once I get that stitch done then I'm going to come back in here and tack and reinforce these two seams and uh, also the one in the back over here that we need to have for a nice clean finish. So now, what I need to do is I need to kind of secure these points and this over here and then this one will be completed. Okay, so I'm going to come back here, kind of pull my overlock stitches a little bit. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to kind of roll them into the seam allowance and then I'm going to stitch, fold this down and I'm going to stitch it. Now you can see I'm not super, I'm not perfect right here. so. You could also do it this way, but then you, you'd see that seam allowance. I think I'm better off doing it this way. Um, and because this is really bulky, I'm actually going to start it kind of on the seam a little bit further up and then go down to that fold over elastic. And then I just do a little securing stitch right there. I probably did a little bit longer than I needed to. Okay, over here. Pull this under and come over here. This side looks a lot better. Sometimes it doesn't really like me bulk. And I've got a big knot. But despite my big knot, it's actually still secure. That's not going to come undone. The last thing I want to do over here is kind of do the same thing up at the seam, fold it to an, a side, hiding that's those stitches in there, and then just do a reinforcement stitch here as well. like how thick it is. So I 
I still secure it because it's stitched the same spot over and over again. Um, so that is actually pretty good. If you're not real happy with that, you can always go in and hand stitch that seam allowance down. I will clip up my threads. But other than that, this is complete.